Hi guys, welcome back to the Knox Bennett channel. Welcome everyone, welcome. All right, so today we're looking at the broad topics for CSEC 2023. Let's go, let's go. Using a calculator, otherwise evaluate each of the following. So guys, go ahead. Um, this won't be a rush video. So go ahead and try the question. Type it in the comment section. Before anything else, ensure that you share it with a friend. Uh, we are doing seasick. Don't be selfish. Let's go. Let's go. This will be an awesome video for everyone who watches. If you're watching the playback, just hit the like button if you want. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So we have two and a quarter minus one and three fifth divided by three. Now the line mean divide. So first we're gonna do the top. So that's two quarters. Two and a quarter minus one and three. Fifth. So we're gonna convert one a quarter to a mix two four eight and one nine over four. Pick up everybody who subscribed to the channel. Pick up everybody who share. All right, one by five, five and plus three that's eight over five. We find our LCM of five and four, which is twenty. So our LCM will be twenty. If you're not sure how we get that, we just keep adding four plus four that's eight plus that. 12 plus that 60 plus that 20, I will do the same for 5. 5 and 5, 10 plus that 15 plus that 20. All right, so that's how we find our else here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So we say 4 into 20, that goes 5 times. So we multiply by 5, 9, 5, 45. So our subtraction sign. 5 into 20 goes 4 times. So we multiply 8 by 4, which is 32. We subtract 2 from 5 leave 3, and 3 from 4 leave 1. So we have 13 over 20. This line means divide. But a student seems not to know that. Guys, we have to do better, all right? So we divide by 3. I'm just going to put it over 1 to make it more complete. And then we say 13 over 20. When we are dividing, we change the division to multiplication and reciprocate. So 3 over 1 becomes 1 over 3. And then, as usual, when we are multiplying, we multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So that leaves us with 20, 13 over 60. And that will give you 2 or 3 marks depending on here that's sick that's how they are guys that's how they are let's go let's go hit the like button let's go let's move on to the next question all right so now we have 2.14 times sin 75 give your answer correct to two decimal places now with this guys you are allowed to use your calculator so don't be a hero just punch it in your calculator and whatever it gives you you round off that number to two decimal places. So do it for me now. Put 2.14 in your calculator. Everybody do that. Multiply by sin 25. So you press the multiplication and then you press sin and type 75. All right. It should give you 2.0. Six, seven, and some other numbers. Since this is two decimal places, we're not going to write the others because it's not important. What's important is right here. All right. If this number is five, six, seven, eight, nine, we add one to this. So it is greater than five. So we add one to six, which becomes 0 0.7. Two decimal places mean only two numbers must come after the decimal point. Try to remember that, guys. All right, let's go. Let's go. Hit the like button. Share it, guys. I share it yet. I share the video. Oh, yeah, wow, with mine. All right, it says Perma Homes Pay. Perma Takes Home Pay is 4,000 children, 20 per fortnight, and in brackets every two weeks. Each fortnight, Perma's pay is allocated according to the following table. So we have the item, the rent, the food, the other living expense, savings, and then we have the total. What is Irma's annual take-home pay? Assume she works 
two weeks in any given year. Now, if every two weeks you're gonna earn four thousand three twenty, guess how many ways you can look at this, right? So that's every fortnight, every two weeks. So what we can do, we can say, okay, there's two fortnights in every month. So we can multiply by two. And again, guys, you have a calculator. You can just punch up in a calculator. You have to be efficient. No matter waste the time, all right? I'm just showing the steps because I want person to fully get. So this is what you get per month because it's two fortnights in every month. So we just, all right? And then now, you know, probably this is not the best way. Since as I said, assume it's 52 weeks. Let us just divide this and get 26. Let us do it the other way, guys. Since as I say, assume that. We could just, all right, so if I get this every two weeks, that means that it's going to get 26 times per year, right? So let us just multiply by 26. That's not complicated. I was going to say two times that for a month and then you multiply by 12. But then that will give us about 48 weeks. So let us just work with the information they give us. All right, so it would be 4,320 times 26, which gives us 112,000. So is our annual would be 112,320. That's the annual take home, all right? So that's what they ask for, which is 11,320. And that is only worth one month, so don't complicate it, guys. All right, it says determine the amount of money that Irma allocates for rent each month. All right, so we're going to calculate how much for rent each month. Notice this is the fortnight pay that they gave us. So this is the fortnight pay. So this is the monthly money. All right, so this is the monthly. Oh, we had calculated it already. All right. So the monthly total is 8,640. Now let's see how we can solve for rent, which is X. Now we don't know, what we can do is to find the value of X and then we can get that. So what we know, we know that X plus, we could do it for the month first, for the week fortnight, and then we divide by it. Plus two X, and we know that all of this add up to give you the fortnight pay. So you have two X and then we have 1750. We form an equation and this must work out to 4320. Alright. So X and X that's 3X. So all we have to do now is to add these two because they are like here. So add 629 plus 70. Let me just punch out in my calculator with the interest of time. All right, so we have 1750. Guys, remember, I encourage you to try plus 629, which gives us 2379. It's 2379. Nine. And that must equal to 4320. So we're going to transpose. So we're going to subtract this from the 4000. So we minus 2379. And then we divide by 3. And that will give us the rent for our night. All right. Let's go. If you like, Bonnie, if you're just running. Broad topics, guys. Broad topics, 2023. So that gives us 1,941. 1,941. So now we're going to divide by 3, and that will give us what it is for the rent. Because the 
value of x represent. All right. So now all we have to do now is just divide by three. And that gives us 647. This 647 is for one week, one fortnight rather, one fortnight. So see here, this represents one fortnight, say so six. So the number again, six four seven, six four seven, yeah. So rent is six four seven per fortnight. So for in, in order to get the monthly, we have to double that. But let us write other living expenses. I know they're gonna have something about that. So let me just put here. To get the other living expenses, we need to multiply 647 by 2. And that gives us 1,294. So this is for the living expense, 1,294. And this is for the fortnight, you know. Remember, all of this is for fortnight. They ask us for monthly, so the rent monthly would be 1,294. That's 1,294 monthly, so each month. So read the questions carefully, guys. I myself is guilty sometimes of not reading it totally correct. All right, let's go. All right, all of Irma's savings is used to pay her son tuition, university tuition cost. Oh my God, this is so, so disturbing just reading that. It's reality though. Which is 150,000. If Irma pays remain the same and she saves the same amount each month, what is the minimum number of years that she must work in order to save enough money to cover her son tuition costs? Oh my God. And this is why students must not waste time. This is a very realistic question. Now let's go back up to what is. The, the her savings was, I think it was 1750. Let me just check. Uh, the savings, yeah, it's 1750 per fortnight. All right, let's check how much you work for one year. Let's check how much you save for one year. So it's 1750 per fortnight. And we're going to multiply this by 26 because there's 26 fortnight in one here. Let's see how much you save in one here. And from there, you should be able to get how many years it did take her, assuming that she don't save a dollar more. So it will be 1750. Are people paying our raising on peeps? So that's 10,500. That's what you save per year. So we have to know, say, okay, how many years it will take her to reach to this, right? So we're going to be dividing 150,000 by 10,500. And again, just use a calculator, guys, and that will tell us how many years. It's a long time, though. Oh, my God. This is so sick. Government needs to do better, man. I mean, no, so this is reality. See, if you're 10 years, we send a child to university for one year. Oh, that makes sense. So it's 150,000 divided by 10,500. And that gives us 14. Point two. All right, they say how many years? So it's gonna take at least 15 years. They didn't ask us for months, so I'm assuming they want the answer in years. All right, so 14 years, you won't make it to this. So you have to go up um, beyond, right? Which is 15 years. So imagine you have to work 15 years. To send your child to school for four years. And by the time that inflation that kill a savings it makes no sense. System is rigged. 
All right, this one says simplify completely. 3p squared multiplied by 4p squared. This one, this here one's pretty straightforward in terms of this one. So we just multiply 3 by 4. And when we are multiplying, and the base is the same, so we check both of them are p to add p power. So it would be 2 plus 5. Right. So 3, 4 is 12. No one should be getting these wrong in exam. I have been through this so many times on my channel. So that gives us 12p to the 7th power. All right, let's go. If you're not going to just join in, welcome everyone to my channel, Lennox Bennett here. All right, we have a very interesting one here. It says 3x divided by 4y to the cube divided by 21x squared over 20y squared. Now, when we are multiplying, guys, remember you are encouraged to go ahead and try. When you are multiplying, remember the rule. When you are dividing, remember the rule. All right? So we choose like a regular fraction. So let us go. Guys, you should be able to solve this in about 40 seconds. If not, you are not practicing enough, all right? Please, let's go. So we have 3x divided by 4y squared. So we can write back, let's just write back everything. Let's write one if you appreciate it. I'm just going to try to do that. So notice we said try. I don't know if it's going to work, right? I'm trying to help those who want the help. So we have 21 x squared over 20 y squared. So I'll just remember what the rule states. We write back the first fraction. So we're going to write back 3x. And then we have 4 y cubed. Change this to multiplication and then we reciprocate. So 20 y is at the this is going to go on the top. So that's y squared and I'll put 21 x squared. Now we can go ahead and cancel. So let's go. And it was 3 into itself 1. 3 into 21 goes 7 times. This x will cancel. So we have 1 x in the So Alright, 4 can go into 20. So for this of one going to twenty five times. We have y two and y two. So two of them is gonna cancel. So it's gonna be two minus three. Alright. So this is gonna be one leaf down here. So remember it's at the base and this y gone. So we have leaf now. We have three at the top, but all of them cancel. This is so confusing. Um, the forward cancels, so we have y to 1, so that means it would be 3 over 7y. Oh, we did have an x right here. Almost left it off, sorry. Alright, so guys, please ensure that you can get maximum marks from these. Let's go, let's go. Hit the like button if you're just trying in, share with your friend. Share on your social media platform, all right? Let's go, let's go. All of us can do this together. What you guys say? All right, this one should take you about two minutes. Let's go, let's go. It says solve the equation when we have 3, 7x, 3 divided by 7x minus 1 plus 1 over x is equal to 0. So I'm going to give you guys two minutes to complete. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys, let's go. If you have not hit the like button, you need to do so now. Let's go. Try, guys. Try. Let's go. What's the answer for that one? 3 over 7, x minus 1, plus 1 over x, and that must be equal to 0. So you are expected to find the value of x. What would be the value of x to make that equation works out to 0? Let's go. One minute to go, guys. One minute to go. Let's go.
type in your answer, guys. Type in your answer. I'm checking the comment section to see who get the correct answer. Let's go, let's go. You guys need to join my class. You need to be a part of my marathon. Let's go. Let me just put the number right there so you guys can. Everyone should have my number by now because I keep leaving it everywhere. So it's 549-2161. And my name is Lennox Bennett. So by the time I finish typing this, guys, you should be able to finish. All right, let's go. Pick up to all the other mathematics teacher on YouTube to try to help the kids you what you guys are trying to do also let's go let's go one team let's put the dream work all right so we have three over seven x minus one plus that all right so let's go time is up hope that you guys are all right it says recording it says recording but my screen is not shared. So let me screen, share what my screen. Sorry about that, guys. My internet chipped out. Not sure what's up. Here. So let me share what my screen. Everyone should be seeing my screen. All right. So you guys are seeing my screen. Thank God. All right. So my internet chipped out. Sorry about that, guys. So we say X. X into 7x minus 1 into this is going to leave x. So we multiply this by x. So that gives us 3x. And then x into this is going to leave all of this. But we are multiplied by 1. So we know it's going to be the same. All right. So we're not going to bother write it up there. So. so that's minus 1. And this equal to 0. At this stage, we can equate it to 0. All right, not to zero, we're gonna equate the top. So it's three x plus seven x. Who get who got the answer? Who did this? Minus one equal zero. So what we're gonna do now is to solve for x three and two, seven, that's ten x minus one plus equal to zero. So we want to get x by itself, so we get rid of this minus 1, so it's going to be 10x equal positive 1, because we're going to add 1 to both sides. And from there, we can see that we solve our x by dividing by 10. I would have done several of these on my channel. You guys can go back to that. So the value of x would be 1 over 10. Or 0 0.1 if you like. I'm not sure. All right, let's go, guys. Let's go. My internet are giving me trouble, but I'm still there here with you. Keep the live button for that, guys. Put your effort and energy going to this video. Let's go. Let's go. All for you, guys. Let's go. All right, guys. So it's multiple papers I'm working. So questions will look a bit weird. Like they say, oh, we don't fraction already. No, we're not done fraction. We're back at it again. So if somebody just joined or they joined late and didn't and they missed the fraction, they get an opportunity. Work out that guys, what you get. Alright, so it says find the exact value of three and three eight divided by bracket five over twelve plus one over three. Give your answer as a mixed number in a simple form. So I will give you guys an opportunity to complete that in about two minutes or less. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Type it in. What's the answer? Let's go. I'm preparing you guys for the actual exam. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. How would we approach that? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We have no time to do, guys. No time to do. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, you should be finished by now, guys. Type in your answer. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Let's go. Motivation, let's go. Push yourselves, guys. All right. 30 more seconds. Let's go. Type in your answer, guys. Let's go. 
If you're just joining, welcome, welcome. All right, see my number there, 549-2161. Send me a WhatsApp. You can be a part of my marathon. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, let's go now. So it says, find the exact value of 3 and 3, 8 divided by 5 over 12 plus 1 over 3. So it's in brackets. So we're just going to work out the bracket part first. So it says 5 over 12 plus 1 over 3. To find the LCM of 12 and 3. Once you add in and subtracting, you find the LCM. So the LCM would be 12. 12 into that 1. So we multiply by 1. So that's 5. 3 into 12 goes 4 times. So we multiply 1 by 4, which is 4. And this gives us 9 over 12. We don't have to simplify it if we don't want to. All right, let's go now. So we're going to divide. Guys, ensure that you put it back in the same order. So 3 and 3, 8 should be in the front. We're going to convert it. 3, 8 is 24. 24 and 3, 27 over 8. So it's going to be 27 over 8 divided by basically 3 quarters. Because if we can simplify this, we can do that. 3 into this goes 3 times. And 3 into this goes 4 times. All right. So now we say 27 over 8 times 4 over 3. So we're going to reciprocate. So that's 4 over 3. A big bad number there, guys. All right. We can say 4 into itself 1, 4 into 8. Two, so we're left with two right here. Three into itself one, three nines twenty-seven. So that's nine over two, which is the same thing as four and a half or four by five, whichever you prefer. So it's four and a half or four point five. What did you guys get? Let me check who type in four and a half. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's go. This one says simplify bracket x to the third power bracket squared. And we have y to the 8 divided by y to the minus 5. What would be the answer for this one? All right. Two ways we can look at it, guys. To take about a second to do this. So we have x to the third, square mean, the number multiplied by itself. So this is one way you can look at it. And then we add the powers. Once the base is the same, we add the powers, right? So we add 3 plus 3, which is 6, or we can simply say 3 multiplied by 2, which is x to the six. Either way, it is perfectly. Alright, so we have y to the 8 divided by y to the minus 5. The rule when we are dividing is a little bit different. When we are dividing, the base is the same, we subtract. So we're going to minus, minus 5. And be careful, man, this you can write. This is going to become 8 plus 5. So that will work out to y to the 13. 8 plus 5, 13. And that should be our answer. And Jesus. All right, this one say factorize x y minus y squared. So factorize mean we're gonna take out what's common. If you look closely, we can see that y is common here and the y is common here. This is y to the one and y to the square. So we take out the highest common factor, which would be y itself. All right, now we're gonna divide y into x y. That leave x and then we have minus y. And that would be our answer. That is why it's all the words. One more. Expect you guys to do it in about 30 seconds at most. Alright, so we have x squared minus y squared. What would be the answer for that? Type that in the comment section. Let's go. And remember, we are factorizing. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. What's the answer? Type it in. I don't see no answer, man. What up, one, guys? What up, one? All right, so we take, we can look closely and we see that it's a difference of 2 squared. So what we do, 
find the square root of p. So the square root of x, what we will multiply by itself to give us x p. That is x, so we put it on either side. Same thing for y, that would be y. One should be plus, and one should be minus. So it's x plus y, and x minus y. Let's go, guys. Let's go with the light button, man. We're not deal with All right. It says, n simplify the expression x y minus y squared upon x squared minus y squared. So you would have had the privilege of doing the first part of it. So guys, it's a follow-up question. If you get the first part wrong, chances are you'll get the total question wrong, but you'll get for some working. So let us just ignore the top part because we now have this about. So we're gonna factorize again. So we have y and then we got x minus y. This one is a difference of two squares, so we have got x plus y and x minus y. So we got, so now we would cancel, whichever we can cancel. So if you look close, it's x minus y and x minus y, that is itself one, that is itself one. So we are left with y over x plus y. And that would be our answer. All right, guys. So just remember, as I said, it's many papers from 2012 to straight to 2023. Let's go. Hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. All right, guys. So we on to letter by. It says the diagram not drawn to scale shows two bars of peanut butter. What's one favorite of the same brand? All right, so it says peanut A, peanut butter A, 150 gram, and it costs $2.14, cents, while peanut butter B is 400 grams, and the cost is $6.50. And it says, which of these two bars above of the better buy? So what I would do, I would work out how much for how much how much it costs for a dollar to get how many grams I get right one the highest number of grams because I want no peanut butter right yeah so let me do that so I will divide 150 by 2.14 so it's almost like a pie right On the my calculator, same thing. So it's 400 divided by $6.50. Like what now, guys? What are these, man? Right, let's see what this work out to. Put that in my calculator right now. So it's $150. Type in the comments so you get for your answer. 150 divided by 2.14. Sorry for the code. So that works out to 70 dollars, 70 grams. So you get 70 grams. So every dollar you get 70 grams. Let's see how much you get here. I have 400. I'm going to divide 400 by 650. 6, 6, so that's 400 divided by 650. Bam, bam, bam. All right, so I'm going to get 61 grams. So clearly, you can see that A would be the better buy. So that's 61 by 3. I can run it up to 4, but it's still not close. So this would be the better buy. And it did say show all the working. Let's go, let's go with the light button, guys. Let's go. Let's 
one says Thomas invested $1,498 at $6 simple interest per annum. Calculate the interest in dollars earned after six months. How much time you need to do that, guys? Let's go complete that one and then we go to the solution. If you're just joining, you miss a lot. Ensure you watch the playback. All right, ensure so you share with someone so they can get the benefit of this video also. Doesn't cost you a dollar to share, doesn't cost you a dollar to like. All right, let's go. All right, so simple interest. Is the principal times the time times the rate. So we get the hundred, right? So basically, that's how we get the hundred because it's from the rate. The rate is expressed as a percent. So they gave us the simple interest for the principal. Hey, you're good. Big up, man. Big up. <laughs> so it is one thousand four ninety-eight. That's a principal. What the time? Now the time is six months, so we have to be very careful because the time should be expressed in years. So six months would be six over twelve. I'm just gonna use zero point five, because that's what it works out to a half. So I'm just gonna use zero point five, and then we times the rate, which is six percent. So that's six over hundred. I'm not going to be wasting any time. I'm just gonna put it in my calculator. Because time is very good. Um, time should be efficiently managed. So it's 1498 times 0 0.5 times 6. And I'll be right. So that gave me 4000. So that's the initial thing. So it's 4000. 494. But that's not the answer yet, right? Because you have to divide by 100. And this is where two marks. When you divide it by 100, you put this amount. Equal, so that's $44. So it works out to $44. That's not a lot of money. But remember, the time is very short. So it's $44.94. Almost forty-five dollars. Nobody not give forty-five dollars nowadays. Time is so rough, you know what I mean. So nobody not gonna really give it. Let's go, let's go. Hit the like button, now, guys. If you're just joining, hit the like button. Share with someone, share with a friend. Nothing wrong with sharing. Sharing is caring. Come yeah, on, definitely, definitely, guys. Ensure you are subscribed so you can get my next video. Put your notification. Like it says, Thomas invested that, 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 and it asks the total amount of money in the account after three years. So we have to be very careful. The fact that they said the total, that means it is a simple interest plus the principal. All right, assuming that you don't take out no money. Time so hard. You know, we'll take out something like that. Well, let's go. So you find the simple interest for three years. So it's the same principal, same rate, which is 6%, but this time, the time is 3 years, all right? So let me divide by 100, so let me just put that in the calculator. Who interpret it like that? Let me know. So it will be 1,498, so it's 1,498. Times 18. Okay. Uh, I will be working on guys. I want to only like this video. I want to refer to it. Times 18. 6 is 18. So that's 26,000. Nine sixty four. No, we still have to divide by 100, though. I will never do that part. So it'll be 1, 2. So basically, from this, you would have made for two years, you would have made a profit of 
169, Then you have to add that to the 190, 1498. So we need the total, so let's do that. So that will be 4, 6, 8 and 9, 17, 7 carry 1, 9 and 1, 10 and 6 carry 1. So after three years, you'll have a total of 1,700 and somebody. <laughs> it's not bad at all, no matter what you look at it, all right? Even for US or Jamaica. I did not get those in Jamaica, I did see any. Let's go, hit the like button, guys. All right, and the last part says, how long, how long it will be before his investment earn $449.40. All right, so what it is, they want us to find the time that it will take. Let us go back to the original question. So the initial investment was $1,498. I want to see the interest on that. What is the time? You know, the rate was 6%. You don't know the time. And you don't know the time this time, right? But we know how much he is going to earn. So we know the simple interest, which is 449.40. So how we have to do from here is to just transpose for T and then solve and we get the world so let's go with the right button guys only for effort you know and this is where two marks so we write back this and then we multiply by 100 because we are transposing um in the next t t this will look up the formula so this is being divided here so it times i don't know these stuff guys go back to my earlier videos and simple interest and stuff like that Simple interest, all right, and then we divide by one four nine eight five six, and this will give us eight years. So this is for the one two, so we just can just put four nine four zero, and we divide by this. I'm just gonna point it in the calculator for the interest of time. So it's 4,000, no, it's 44,000, so let's go. As I said, guys, a lot of effort this day, you can trust that you like the video. That's all I have. So it doesn't cost you a dollar to like the video. All right, so we have 44940. Divide, put the bracket, because we want to work out the bracket card first, which is 1498. times six and that equal exactly five years so it will take five years to earn that it's a very long time to earn 400 and something dollars all right let's go guys let's go let's go hit the like button for the effort what are wow man let's go all right this one says solve for x will x are real numbers so let's go let's go so first we're gonna solve for x as a says um so we have 5x we have x over here so, so i'm gonna bring over this 5x so we have 8 minus x minus 5x less than or equal to positive 2 since i subtract we need to get rid of this 8 by subtracting it from this side, so the two one side, we're gonna get the both sides. So we have negative x, don't forget that minus 5x, and that's less than or equal to 2 minus 8. Alright, this is gonna give us negative 6x, and this will give us negative 6. Um, now we're going to be dividing by negative 6. It's not about inequality, guys. When we are dividing by um, a negative coefficient, we have to turn on the sign. All right? I have discussed that with my students several times. 
So we divide by minus 6. What we divide both sides by minus 6. So x is greater than or equal to negative cancel negative 6 into 6, 1. So x would be greater than or equal to 1. So we include 1 and then we continue to so include here. And that's done. It says show your solution to A1 on the number line. So A greater than or equal to 1 would be right here because if we block out because we're going to include 1. Alright, if it was just greater than 1, then you have on a circle like this. That's why it's a circle and it would be open. But since it is, we must include 1. So it would be something like and you know that shows that it continues to be in. If it was just greater than alone, then it would add a little hope to, to show that we don't include one. But when it dotted, show that we include one. Let's go, let's go. All right, this one's an expand and simplify. Go ahead and do that, guys. And this is for two marks. Let's go, let's go. Welcome, if you're just joining for the first time, you have missed a lot. Please ensure so you watch the playback. Alright, this should take you about two minutes or three minutes there about. Guys, remember you want to work efficiently. And for those who are always asking about my phone number, let me just put it right here. Along with my name, my name is Lennox Phoenix. And this is my channel. See my number here. By the time I finish, you guys should finish simplify that. Let's go, guys. All right. So it says expand. So expand means to multiply, basically. So we're going to multiply, and then we're going to simplify if there are any like terms. All right. There should be one system to expand and simplify. So 2x times this will give us 2x squared. 2 times 5 will be 10x. Alright, so we we'll move on to the next bracket, which is going to be multiplying by negative 3. So negative 3 times that x will give us negative 3x. Alright, so we have a negative times a negative. Oh, what? So we have negative 3 times negative 4. A negative times a negative that positive and then 3 times 4 which is 12 so now we have 2x squared we're going to maintain that as you know like terms like that also the 12 only goes in the middle we're gonna, and 10 minus 3 would give us positive 7 since the 10 is bigger so there we have it so if we should factorize this we should get back right. thank you guys so much Let's go, let's go, guys. I'm gonna move on to another paper soon. Looking at different, different types of questions for the broad topics. Let's go. All right, this one says simplify 3x squared times 4x third divided by 2x. No, I'm not gonna rewrite it, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain. So we multiply 3 times 4, which is 12. When the base is the same, which is x and x, we add the power. So we're going to add 2 plus 3, which gives us 5, and then we divide by 2x. So our final answer would be 12x to the fifth divided by 2x. Now we can put 2x to the 1, because that's what it actually means. So 2 into 12 goes 6 times. When the base is the same, and we divide it, we subtract. So we're going to subtract 5 minus 1, which gives us 4. So our final answer for these two marks would be 6x to the fourth power. I'm expecting students to ease all of these. These have been done on my channel multiple times. All right. So it says right as a single fraction in its lowest term. So with this, we treat it like a regular fraction. Go ahead and try. Two minutes, guys. Let's go. Hit the like button if you're just joining. Hit the like button. Let's go. Let's go.
like for part two intro say you follow me for part two all right let's go let's go you know this video should be pretty long but we have to do what we have to do all right let's go let's go so we find our lcm up to one five which is like a regular fraction which is 10 2 into 10 goes 5 times, so we multiply 5 times x, which is 5x, 5 times 1, which is 5. So we finish with that, we go to 2 now, 5 rather, 5 into 10 goes 2 times, 2 times 5, which is 10, and then 2 times negative x, and negative times are positive, that's negative, so that's negative 2x. Group we like terms as students like to not see. Um, be very careful with this guy. There's no equal sign, so the signs remain. So we have a plus 5 and a plus 10, it does not become negative, as some students would say. It's on the same side, so we're not subtracting or adding from one side to the next. So it will be the same thing. So our final answer would be 5x minus 2x, which is 3x. And then we have 5 plus 10, which will give us 15 or 50 over 10. Alright? And guys, please don't be tempted to divide this by 5 and this by 5. Only if the number can go into all three of them, then you can simplify. As it is, this is its lowest term. Alright? I've seen students get the answer already and then they continue. To divide that by say five for example all right unless you're gonna put three over five x plus three over two that's the only way you can simplify it further but you don't have to do that all right hit the like button guys if you appreciate the mr bennett hit the like button if you don't appreciate them yeah. <laughs> all right so this one says four factorize completely 4x squared minus 4x, all right? So what we're going to be doing, we're going to take out, we can do it one of two ways. I'm going to do it both ways, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to factorize like the difference of two squares. So this will give us 2x squared of 4x squared 2x. So we have it on either side. And then we have the square root of 4, which is 2. So we add 2 uh, with minus 2. That is one possible solution. The next possible solution would be to factor the 4, since 4 is common. So we have 4. We just rewrite it. I don't know what my own little style on it. Alright, so we factor the 4 because 4 is common. That would be correct, right? 4 into x squared into 4x squared would be x squared. And then we have 4 into 4, 1. So in the bracket, you notice the other one. Type in that in the comment section, guys. Type in that. Let's go. 30 seconds to type in that. Yes. If you had type in a difference of 2 square, yeah. So it would be 4 x plus 1 and x minus 1. Because when you factorize this, you just take the square root of this and the square root of this, which is x. The square root of 1 is 1. Alright, guys. So I'll show you both ways. You just put R there. You can do it both ways in the exam. Alright, show them you understand what you're doing. Let's go. Alright, guys. This one says simplify p cube q squared times p cube to the fifth power. Marks is not here, but usually this is where marks, and then for the next one, it says express as a single fraction in simplest form p over 3 plus 3 over 2. So do those, and then it says factorize x squared minus 5x plus 4. So we're gonna do all of that, a, b, and c. Let's go with the like button as you join. If you're just joining, if you are being with me from the start, thank you for making it to this far to watching the playback and you make it this far congratulations you should be getting an excellent grade in the examination all right type in when you get to a guys to a simplify p cube q square times p cube five all right so what it is we 
know that when we have the same base, meaning the same letter for P3, P, these are the same base. We add, once we are multiplying, we add the power. So it will be 3 plus 1. And for Q, it will be 2 plus 5. All right? So that will give us 3 plus 1. It will give us 4. Oh, see the number there, guys, for those who want to be a part of a class. Oh, guys, please. I'm already teaching on YouTube for free. My classes are not free. All right. All right, so let's give you our answer. If our class is discounted, Americans are on. So, so you guys can check out that. It says express as a single fraction in its simplest form. So let me just rewrite. So we have A over 3. Plus 3a over 2. Alright, our LCM of 2 and 3 over 6. Once you're adding and subtracting, we must find the LCM. Alright, and then we say 3 into 6 goes 2 times. So we multiply by 2, which gives us 2a. 2 into 6 goes 3 times. So we multiply 3a by 3, which gives us 9 so we have both of them of the same denominator, so we can go ahead and add. So it would be 11a over 6, and that would be our answer. Alright, All right. this one says factorize completely. Just going to draw a line. It says x squared minus 5x plus 4, so that's x squared minus 5x plus 4. We're going to use the factor method. If not, we use a quadratic formula, which is x equal minus b plus r minus b for a squared. B, b squared minus 4ac all over b. If not, but this looks like it can be factorized without that. So let's go. So we'll label it a, b, c. And if I can factorize it, go ahead and do so. So we multiply a times c, so that's x squared times 4 which gives us 4x squared, and as usual, we list all the factors of 4. Go back to primary school, so it's 1 times 4, and 2 times. So we want to see which one of them can be 5. Clearly this card, plus 1 to a 4, can add these two to give us 5. So these are the factors. However, how can we set up 1 and 4 to give us negative 5? If we multiply negative times and negative, that's positive. And if we add negative and negative, we get negative. So it's going to be x squared minus x, which is 1x, minus 4x. Because the value of this is also 5x, right? And then we can go up plus 4. And from there is k equal. We just simply put our bracket and then put what's common. X is common here. X into X is X. X into itself is 1. Alright, put our minus and our 4, right? Negative into negative, that's positive. Positive divided by a negative to negative. So that will be our answer. X minus 1 and X minus 4. It doesn't matter, it's multiplication, so you can have either one at the top, alright? So guys, I'll see you guys in part two. All right, thanks for watching. This is Deluxe Penny. Tomorrow, but I'll see you guys in another video. Big up everybody who watch my channel. Big up everybody who share. Big up all the teachers who share with them. Everybody on the entire Caribbean.